Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters here on a given Tuesday. We have uh, Janine Sullivan. She is the executive director of The Pantry, uh, Feeding Hawaii Together. I don't know if I've got all the words in there. What's your corporate name, Janine? The Pantry by Feeding Hawaii Together. Okay, very important. Food is important. Feeding people is important. Feeding people is always important, but in time of COVID, when a lot of people do not have the same you know, resources they had before, it becomes all the more important because you, know, you have a breakdown of society if people are hungry. This is a serious problem if people are hungry. So tell us about the company. It's a nonprofit. Today is Giving Tuesday. It's an appropriate time to discuss how we can support you, Janine. Um, so, and you're decades old, that's very interesting. So tell us the history, tell us what you're doing these days. Absolutely, no, thank you for taking the time to meet with me. Um, the Pantry is a 20 year old organization and we're built on the concept of providing fresh, diverse, nutritious food to those in need. And so I think in the times of COVID that, I mean, of course the, the need has increased during the times of COVID, but we're not just a COVID focused organization. We've been here for the past 20 years and we expect to be here for the next 20 years. And so, you know, we're, we're really excited about what we're doing and we feel strongly that no one in Hawaii should go hungry. Um, a recent survey came out that said one in five Hawaii residents struggle with food insecurity, which is an astronomical number. And certainly, you know, we've seen that increased due to um, the financial difficulties that COVID has created. But we're really passionate about making sure that um, anyone who needs help can come to us and we'll be sure that they get that fresh, diverse, nutritious food. Oh, I want to, I want to drill down on all of that. So interesting. You know, we cannot afford, as I said before, we cannot afford to have people hungry in our community, for, not only for the human empathy of it, um, but it, 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 it undermines the, uh, the social compact. It undermines the viability of our community together. And we, we can't stand it if they're hungry. We can't stand it. And I guess you feel that way too. What, what made you join this organization? What made you, you know, devote yourself to its mission? Absolutely. So I'm um, a, a Hawaii girl, born and raised. Um, like many people, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to go to the mainland and spend some time on the mainland working for different organizations, different companies. Um, and I spent a lot of time on the corporate side of the world, really looking at finance and venture capital and startups. And I really had always had my heart set on coming back home once I had um, enough experience. And so um, I, was, I was home, uh, working from home actually before COVID all hit. Um, I was just doing some consulting work and working from home, and I had learned about this opportunity to help reopen the pantry um, in the beginning of the, the year. And I just really felt that that was the opportunity that I had been working my entire career to find so that I could lead an organization and make sure that I'm able to make that impact that I had been looking my whole career to, to make. Great story. So it was closed at the time. What's the backstory on that? Absolutely. So as I had mentioned, we're a 20 year old organization. Um, we closed a few years ago when our property in Kaka'aka was sold to a developer. And so um, for about a two to three year time span, we were looking for our next um, facility. And so with the, uh, the support of a community development block grant, we were able to purchase a 13,000 square foot facility in Kalihi right at the intersection of the H1 and H2 to make sure that we we're at a location that would be very easily accessible for our clients who are coming from all over the island um, and just make sure that they would have easy access to us. So we reopened on April 1st of this year. And since then, you know, we've served over 60,000 individuals. Um, we serve about 11,000 individuals every month. And we just wanna make it known that if anyone is in need, we're here to help and um, you know, visit thepantry.org to register for food, to shop for food. But um, you know, especially in the season of the holidays, no one should go hungry. And we're here to make sure that that doesn't happen. Especially in the holidays, it's really depressing when you don't have food in the holidays that, that, that tears at you, tears at everyone. <clears throat> so, um, you, know, I, you know, I was gonna actually start a show, Janine, 
counting the number of people who had died from COVID. So, so right now it's 260,000. And we thought we'd get some people together and just simply count. The problem was it would take you weeks, 24 by seven, to count to 260,000. On the other hand, it would take you a long time to just count to 11,000. So you do a lot of things and we don't have time to count to 11,000 today, but that's a big number. And a 13,000 foot you know, facility, that's a big number too. That's a big facility. Uh, that's an ambitious plan, uh, no kidding. Can you talk about how you acquired that facility? Absolutely. So we worked, um, we were working with a number of different organizations once our organization had to close in Kaka'ako due to uh, the real estate. And so we were working with a number of agencies. We were applying for a number of grants and the community development block grant was gracious enough to accept our grant and help us purchase this three and a half million dollar facility so that we could carry out our mission of making sure that no one goes hungry and that we solve food insecurity in Hawaii. How long did it take you to implement that plan to buy and to set it up? Uh, the purchasing part was the most um, time consuming aspect. It took us about two years to find and purchase a facility. And then it took us about another year to bring the facility up to code. So, you know, a number of wonderful organizations and charities within Hawaii helped us do that. So we had to put in a brand new um, fire sprinkler suppression system just to make sure that we're a safe organization for all of our volunteers and clients who are on the facility. Um, and we were able to do that with the gracious support of a number of organizations who all shared our vision and continue to share our vision. Wow, that's a major project. And so um, you, you store all the food in this 13,000 foot facility. If somebody wants food, they go on your website, the name of which is the, the Pantry by Feeding Hawaii Together? The Pantry.org. Uh, pantry.org, that's simpler. Very simple. <laughs> I go on the website and it's gonna ask me about my income and see if I qualify. Um, and if, if I qualify, then um, you'll, you'll invite me to come over and pick it up or how will you get it to me? Yep, it's actually an even simpler uh, process than that. So you go online to thepantry.org and you register and there you self-certify to your income level. And so once you self-certify, you're immediately welcome to shop online and pick the items that um, you and your family want to eat. And so in the same way that you, know, you might go um, grocery shopping at a store, the same concept applies, but online. So you as the client are able to go online, pick what you want, what you eat that's within your dietary restrictions and desires, add that to your cart, check out, and you'll be given a pickup date. And so you can come to our facility on that pickup date. We operate a drive-through walkthrough. So just bring your order number, come and we'll give you your order in a contactless manner to make sure that now we're keeping our volunteers safe, our clients safe, but also our community safe, especially during these very uncertain times. I'm, I'm really impressed. So it goes from the website to somebody who goes and pulls it off the shelf and puts it in a basket or a box and then and sets a date, or you set the date, I suppose, and then you meet that person. And, and that includes frozen goods as well as um, you know, room temperature goods. Uh, That's absolutely so correct. It's done at a, at a certain time, so it's not, you know, it hasn't defrosted and so forth. Right. So um, we have walk-in refrigerators and walk-in freezers on our facility that we obviously use to supplement the dry goods. So for anyone who is shopping online, um, for example, today we have a number of dry goods, but we also have frozen, frozen fresh local fish. Um, we also have frozen pork patties. And so obviously we're not putting those items on the shelf in preparation. Um, we, grow, we get those items and we add that into the orders at the time of pickup to make sure yeah. that we're maintaining all health standards. Well, now um, suppose, I, suppose, I, um, um, suppose I'm the kind of person who really feels, uh, wants to take advantage of the system. Okay, I wanna game the system. I, I, wanna, I want a lot of food and I qualify but I also ask for a ton of food. Um, do you have controls on that? Yes, we do. So we have three rules in place for the pantry. The first is that you're able to shop once per week. 
And so because everyone is registering online, we're able to see who's coming and who's picking up. Um, but also the second rule is that we put a quantity restriction on um, the number of items that you're allowed to take. And that depends on your family size. So um, for a family of two, you get, for each person in your household, you get an allow, allotment of 10 items. So if you're a family of two, you get 20 items. If you're a family of eight, you get 80 items. And we've really found that our clients take what they want and what they need. And, um, you know, just because they have eight people in their family doesn't always mean that they're getting 80 items. They're really just taking what they want and what they need. Yeah. So uh, what about the, you know, the quality of these, of these products? I mean, uh, <clears throat> uh, are, they, are they below standard? Are they seconds in some way? Or there's the same thing I could find in, uh, in any in any food food market in Hawaii, I suppose, no? Yes, no, it, this is not um, anything that you you or anyone wouldn't go to the grocery store and get yourself anyway. This is all um, same quality type of food. Everything is, um, you know, of course, food standard, within food standards, but we actually, the way that w the organization works is, is that we partner with local food suppliers, with local food banks to get the food into the hands of those in need. And so that of course includes a number of food purchases. So we work with a number of food partners within the community, all local, that we buy things either at no margin. So we're saving costs as best as we can. Um, but I mean, we, we make food purchases and they're the exact same things that would go to a Costco, that would go to a Safeway, that would go to a food land. What about high-end things? What about extravagances? I mean, not to say this is an extravagance, but suppose I put my whole budget of items on Ben and Jerry's ice cream, uh, and it's obvious that's not healthy for me or my family. Um, do you have control on that? We do, and that's actually a great point in that what we're working on for our upcoming releases, right now we're on the website, but in the next 30 days or so, we're launching the Pantry app that is going to incorporate a lot of those nutritional suggestions. And so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, and more, more news to come when, we're, when we go live. But um, yes, we do put restrictions to make sure that, um, you know, one family isn't going away with 50 gallons of ice cream. Yes, we, we make sure that that doesn't happen. Not cool, not cool. <laughs> well, just the logistics. Who has room for 50 gallons of ice cream? Now, what about caviar? I like caviar a lot. Can I put some of my items, my budget, my budget of items on some caviar? Um, we have not made food purchases of caviar um, <laughs> as the, as the, the, leader of this organization, I don't feel like that would be a good use of our uh, um, totally right about that. of our financials. <laughs> so you talk about how, how the, the, you know, the beneficiary, I'll call him beneficiary or her, comes in on the website and, and, and check boxes on what, what he or she wants for the, themselves and family. Um, but what about you or your buyer, so to speak, the one who goes around to, I don't know, Safeway, uh, one of the other food stores, and is going to buy from them at, at no margin or however you set the, the economics up. Uh, is that also uh, mechanized? Is that also uh, done electronically? So I would say it depends. Um, so the way that it works on the buying side of things is that I'll work with local su food suppliers to understand and take in what they have in stock. So certainly um, you know, I put in a big order for white rice just because that's a household staple here in Hawaii. But I also work with them, you know, on seasonal items. So, for example, um, our, our Christmas special, we're distributing giant turkey legs and stuffing and mashed potatoes. And so because those are holiday items, um, they take a little bit more effort to find and secure. But a lot of it is just, of course, relational in that everyone knows everyone in Hawaii. And so we're always looking for more food partners and um, anyone who might have access that they're looking to donate and to make sure that that goes to a good use. What about uh, alcohol? We do not serve alcohol. Good. <laughs> that would really be a risky business. No kidding. No. Yeah. Okay. So you, you know, so you're going to stock the shelves with this. You're going to you're going to let people order it. You're going to deliver it to them. And, I, and one question I was going to ask you is. Who qualifies? What, what are the income levels that, 
that are established here uh, to determine whether I can have the benefit of your operation. Absolutely. So it's as long as your household doesn't exceed 185% of Hawaii poverty levels, which is a federally set standard around income levels, you are eligible for our services. We would be very happy with you. What, what is that roughly now? For a family of four, it's about $55,000. So if I'm less than 55,000, I would qualify for uh, the pantry, uh, food from the pantry. Interesting. Exactly. exactly. And, and when you say household, uh, do, you, do you measure this by the number of people in the household or is it just a household, however many people there are? So the household is defined as, you know, the people that you're registering as a group unit. And so, you know, for someone who lives with maybe two children and themselves, that would be a household of three. And so um, unless the children are making income, it would be you know, that one individual's income level. Um, but the, the situations look different for different scenarios of families and what each family is in, in their own situation. So it sounds like you open an account. You create an account so the pantry knows who I am, so to speak. And when I come in, I log in on that account. And then That's exactly correct, Jay. You don't go through this each time. You, you, you already know who I am. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So for anyone who's new, they register once, and that's when we you give us your information, your your name, your phone number, so that we can contact you, your email, um, how many people are in your household, and then after that, you're able to re to shop once per week. And so, like you had mentioned, our inventory is changing every day, depending on what we have um, purchased or what anyone donates to us. That changes every day. And then we have a, a large number of volunteers, and we're also always looking for volunteers um, who help us custom pack every single order for pickup. So, you know, what you order is what you will get. And we have volunteers who make that a reality. Fabulous. So um, I, tell me more about the volunteers. Uh, who are they? Um, and, um, you know, what about, what about your permanent staff? Who staffs these 13,000 feet of facility? I am the only full-time staff member. Is that right? Okay, I I'm really impressed now. <laughs> and so, you know, especially on Giving Tuesday, please know that, you know, any financial donations you make go directly toward feeding um, our communities and making sure that no one goes hungry. It's, there's very- Your well, volunteers work free. My volunteers do work at no charge. Um, and they're, they're wonderful. I have a, a, a huge assortment of volunteers who come from all over the place. Some of them, um, you know, I have come on a regular basis and we see them weekly. Some of them, um, you know, build their work schedules around volunteering for us. Um, we certainly have members of different organizations that come with us, that come and volunteer with us. The Coast Guard has been a phenomenal supporter. And you know, I, I warn you, Janine, I'm, I'm former Coast Guard. I know, I saw your interview with um, <laughs> one of our regular volunteers. Um, but the Coast Guard's phenomenal. And, you know, we're always looking for other organizations who are looking to make sure that no one goes hungry. Hey, there's a picture of the Coast Guard right there. Okay, all right, great. Now, so what's the demographic of your volunteers? Are they old, young? Where do they come from? Why do they volunteer? Who are they? Or, or maybe you can't even answer that because they come from so many different places. But what, what's your general impression anyway? Um, there's probably two groups of volunteers that we have. We have those that come by themselves because, um, you know, they're just a believers in the mission of making sure that no one goes hungry. And then we also have groups that come in. And so groups like the Coast Guard, uh, groups like the Rotary Clubs, um, church groups, volunteer groups. Um, and we welcome anyone and everyone. You know, every single volunteer matters. Every single hour matters. Um, and what they do is, you know, everything that is needed to maintain a 13,000 square foot uh, facility. So that includes packing orders for our clients so that their custom orders are picked up. It includes putting items in the trunk. Um, it includes making produce bags from the produce that we have going out that day. Um, we have many volunteer needs and would love to work with anyone who has time and is interested in making a difference in the community. Yeah, it's a great way to spend time, really. So is it 24 by 7? Um, do you, are you open and, and running all seven days uh, or what? What are your hours of operation, Janine? 
So anyone is welcome to order and shop and register 24 seven. We are open for pickup 30 days a week, uh, Tuesdays and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then we have volunteers only on Mondays and Thursdays who come and help us custom pack those orders. All right, so now I want to talk about, we have a few minutes left. I want to talk about the larger picture. You know, through this discussion, I keep thinking about Andrew Yang. Remember him? Of course. Um, I thought he was the most selfless guy on the stage, as a matter of fact. You know, I, I thought he was fabulous. And, and his thing about, you know, having, uh, what was it, $1,000 a month? The base. Universal basic income. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was so impressed with that. I think that is the future. And that's why I mention this to you, because I think what you're doing, it's not temporary. And uh, COVID or no COVID, that's where we're all going. That's where this country, with its diversity and its economic complexity, that's where it's going. Um, and, and, and what you're doing now is kind of a forerunner of what will happen and it will continue. Do you agree with my vision on that? Um, I think that I certainly think that especially COVID has shown us um, more so than previous years that the need for basic support services is absolutely fundamental. And it's something that you know a number, if not most all, uh, developed advanced countries, especially in Europe, are doing. And that's just something that um, I think we've all realized is something that we need more of. And I certainly hope we would see more of in the future. Yeah, I, I think I think we'll have to, but it's okay. It's okay to have to, and it's okay to do it. Um, but, you know, one question is is the economic question. I want to, I'm, I'm sure you think about this day and night. Uh, that, that, you know, that's a primary function of your job, isn't it? You have, you, you've described a model where you put the cash in and the benefits come out. It's that simple. You're taking that money, you're buying food and you're giving the food away. Beautiful, simple. However, you gotta, you gotta bring in the cash. So where does that come from? Uh, what, what's, what's the uh, array of, of supporters, so to speak? Uh, who are they? What companies? What kind of organizations are giving you this money? And is it sustainable? Because if, you, if for some reason it dries up, say because of a bad economy, oh, that's a headache for you. So tell me, how do you raise the money? Sure. I mean, I really think of them in really four groups of donors. One is going to be the city, state, and federal. Um, you know, the CARES money just finished uh, yesterday. That was an enormous help. We also received support from city and state, city and County of Honolulu, as well as the state of Hawaii. Um, but all, you know, and that's, of course, a much more variable income source. But I think that, you know, the government has been a great supporter of us, and we certainly hope to work well with them in the future. The second would be um, corporations. So a number of corporations have been incredibly generous because it's their employees, it's their neighbors who are going through these economic difficulties, and they understand the value of being good community partners. Um, you know, we have a number of phenomenal organizations who have given us um, a, a wide range of financial donations and no donation is too big or too small. You know, every single penny matters. Um, and we're incredibly grateful for those generous donors. Um, the third would be different foundations and organizations like that. Um, you know, we work with a number of foundations to get this building and facility back up the open in April of 2020, of course. Um, and so, you know, we, we hope to continue to work with different foundations that we'll continue to see and realize the incredible value that we're bringing to the community. And then the fourth group is, you know, individual donors. And, you know, every single penny matters. There's no donation too big or too small. If you work in a corporation, you know, there's frequently corporate matching. Um, you know, every single dollar matters. All right. What's the future of it, Janine? I mean, is, is the 13,000 square feet going to be enough for you? Do you need another one in, a, in a, some remote location to serve another community, neighbor islands? I don't know. What, what do you, what's on the drawing boards here? Where is the pantry going? Absolutely. So, I mean, our vision is to solve in, food insecurity by 2025. And we think that we have um, a plan to do so. And a large portion of that plan comes from the app that I had mentioned that's going live at the end of this year. 
um, and that will allow us to work with other organizations in a more streamlined manner. It will give us um, better operational visibility so we can think through and think about um, where we want to expand. And you know, how do we eventually give or share this technology with other organizations? You know, we're a nonprofit and our goal is to solve food insecurity. And we want to do that through partnerships. And so we're, we're, we have a lot of plans um, in the future and it certainly involves growth. So stay tuned and visit thepantry.org to keep up to date on what we're working on. <laughs> Will you ever cover, you know, ever sell things other than food? Like for example, uh, dry goods, uh, would you include that in the future? I think that everything's an option at this point. Um, you know, we're looking for sustainable ways to make sure that we're able to continue to serve the community. And if that involves um, a social venture, that's certainly a possibility. But there, we're, we're always open to everything and every, anything. So there's, there's no hard nose on the table. And your, your board, are you close with them? Do they give you direction or are you the kind of leader that, that can do most of it by yourself? I have a phenomenal board. I'm, I'm very close with my board. I actually have two board members volunteering right here, right now. We're in the middle of a distribution. Um, I, I have a phenomenal board that provides wisdom and guidance um, and sometimes just physically being here. Sure. Sure, that's the support all of its own, isn't it? Exactly. <clears throat> so I want to ask you one last question. It's, an, it's a question largely out of curiosity, but here you are. You were on the mainland. Uh, just talking to you, I know you could make uh, a lot of money and uh, that you're well trained in some fashion or another, maybe banking, finance, what have you. Um, and yet you're here. You're here doing altruistic things, eleemosynary things for the community, serving the community in a very, a very poignant way, I might add, you know, some charities, you have to really figure it out. Here, it's food. <laughs> That's different. So, you know, you, do you, I, I sort of think that you do represent a new generation of Hawaii people who, who are definitely Hawaii, who understand they're part of Hawaii, they're part of the fabric, they, they, it's built into them, okay? And, and they're trained, they have experience on the mainland. And one day they decide to come back and do altruistic things, community-based things. And I, and I sense that you're not alone. I mean, I, you, you're unique, I'll say that but you're not alone. And, and that maybe with you shoulder to shoulder, e either now or coming soon, there are others, other people just like you, Jenny, who come and they wanna help the community, they wanna make Hawaii sustainable. Am I right? And to what extent am I right? You are hundred percent right. I have a number of classmates from um, high school here who I've had conversations in very recent weeks who are planning their um, journey back home and they're trying to figure out what do they need to do to make it work here because they want to come back home. They want to give back to their community um, and they, they want to make a difference. And so you're hundred percent right. I think that that's absolutely a growing trend. And now more than ever, um, we need those, those individuals to come back. And you're here, you're a leader. We have to follow you. We have to talk to you again. Uh, we are very impressed. Did I mention that before? Thank you, thank you, Janine Sullivan. It's a wonderful discussion with you and I wish you all the best here on Giving Tuesday. And I hope that you find all the support you want and more. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>